be it from looking at their flag, their local dialect, their money, or their double-decker public transit driving on the left, it is abundantly clear that Australia was colonized by the British. In fact, they colonized the entire country. But they weren't the first to get there. The Dutch were. So just how did the British take over the entirety of this massive island? Since ancient times, European scholars and geographers and the like all speculated about there being some kind of giant landmass at the southernmost edges of the world. After all, there was clearly a lot of land to the north of the equator, so there must be at least as much land to the south, you know, just to balance everything out. This is basically how Europe thought of the map of the world until they decided to actually go and explore that big ball. Of course, Australia, one such theorized landmass, had already been settled for tens of thousands of years by numerous different people groups, all with their own languages which sounded nothing like English. So what happened that changed all that? Well, for that, we are going to have to start at the beginning of European colonialism, or, well, actually the middle. Basically, now that the Americas and much of Africa and Asia had already been colonized by different powers, many of these countries started businesses to make money off of these far-flung territories. Among the most prolific of these was the Dutch East India Company, or the VOC. Crucially for this, basically the only large territory that the Dutch Empire was able to hold on to was of course Indonesia, which became the source of many of the lucrative spices that the VOC would ship back home. Of course, in a primitive time before the transporter was invented, you still had to get from the Netherlands to Indonesia. This involved going down the Atlantic, past Africa, and down to around the 40th parallel south, where traders would then take advantage of a trade wind known as the Roaring Forties. This became known as the Brower Route, and involved ships knowing when to depart these winds and head north towards the East Indies, which is kind of hard to do if you hadn't already spotted St. Paul Island or the randomly named Amsterdam Island. Because of this, many a Dutch trader would get lost and bump into the west coast of Australia. Some of these shipwreck merchants, however, would take note of this brand new island and would name it New Holland, and also found a couple islands nearby and named them after another Dutch province. So yeah, there's one key point to why the Netherlands didn't fully settle Australia. Western Australia kind of sucks. I mean, I'm sure the people there are nice, but it should be pretty revealing as to how few of them there are. Enter the British. From 1768 to 1771, James Cook made a landmark voyage around the world, specifically around the southern parts of the world. He started, naturally, in Britain, and immediately headed down around South America and through the South Pacific, discovering Australia from the other side. You see, if there's anything you should know about how Australia is structured geographically, it's that it is mostly barren and empty, except for this very fertile crescent in the southeast that we can't actually call the fertile crescent because it's already taken- Damn it! This map should show exactly what's going on though. It's a map of the average population density throughout Australia, and you'll notice that most Australians live near the coasts of South Australia, Victoria, New South Wales, and Queensland. Oh, and of course, some people in Tasmania. This only becomes more visible if we look at the locations of Australia's 17 biggest cities, all with a population greater than 100,000. In decreasing order, they are Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth, Adelaide, Gold Coast, Newcastle, Canberra, Sunshine Coast, Wollongong, Geelong, Hobart, Townsville, Cairns, Darwin, Toowoomba, and Ballarat. Jeez, how non-Australian do I sound now? Only two of these cities, Perth and Darwin, lay in the western half of the country. This sole fact, combined with the difficulties of just getting to this part of the world and making it back alive, explain why the Dutch never colonized New Holland, but why the British did colonize Australia. In short, this is why the most visible source of Dutch influence in Australia is of course fairy bread. So just keep this in mind as we get back to the history. So when we last left off, not Captain James Cook was finishing his first voyage around the world in 1771. But what's this? The 1770s? Oh, I think I know what this means for Britain's colonial interests. You see, Britain's first overseas colonies were in modern-day North America, but this changed drastically in 1776, when real history started and the American revolutionaries kicked the British out of all of America. Most of America. Then Britain remembered about that new fertile land they had just found down south, and also needed to relieve their overly packed prison systems, and so established a penal colony in Botany Bay, down in the rugged, unforgiving wastelands of Sydney, establishing the colony of New South Wales in 1788. For the first few decades, though, the British actually decided not to completely jump into taking over everything they saw. They would do that in the 19th century. However, at first, the British only claimed everything on Australia east of 135 degrees east. Then came the mid-19th century, when the British then expanded their claims to the rest of the island, with the establishment of Western Australia. 
Then, blah blah blah, the colonies turned out to be actually quite livable, they united together, minus New Zealand and Fiji, and created a new commonwealth to get more rights and political distance from Britain and now their country. Now, admittedly, this is an incredibly narrow scope of Australian history, which is actually incredibly vast in its own right. But anyone who saw my old History of Australia video that I made just about a year ago, or at least before I enlisted it, knows what happens when I try to talk about all of Australian history as an ignorant American. I apparently just make a bunch of dumb jokes and talk more about the Emu War than actual history. This video, however, was just about a specific part of Australian history. If you wanted to learn more about Australian history, I would either recommend this video by Sweeney, who has the unique advantage of actually being Australian, or this longer video by The Late Brain for Breakfast. This video wasn't really collab or anything, their videos will just probably answer more questions that you might actually have about Australian history, but hey, at least now you know why this massive land only speaks one language. That's gotta count for something. As always, thanks for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and follow me on Twitter. I currently have less than 400 followers there, so it would be nice to bump that up, especially given this channel currently has 40,000 subscribers, so it would be nice to even that out. And I will see you next Sunday.